Hello mate and welcome to another exciting Unity VN video. In this video we are going to add mouse click functionality so that when we click the mouse something happens and we don't progress through certain commands until that is completed. So before we do that what I want to do is actually allow us to put the text because at the moment if you will notice when we run our code that our text is still appearing in the console rather than actually appearing in our interface. And we obviously want to change that because we really need to be able to have our text boxes appear on the screen. So what we're gonna do is come into our input decoder code like so, and then we are going to come down to our say stuff screen. So I'm just gonna get rid of the image stuff for now, reopen the say stuff down to there cool so currently we have our split to say which is really simple we just create some um, we basically split our string our input string into various different statements and that so all of this is fine but where we actually say what we want to say currently all we're doing is outputting that on the debug.log which is obviously no good so what I want to do is say if interface elements is active in the hierarchy like so, then we're going to say interface yeah, interface elements dot set active true. So we are inputting a say command. So if the elements if the in, in, interface elements sorry getting my models worded up again if our interface elements is currently not active then we're going to make it active otherwise the text isn't going to show now we're going to say dialog text object and this is an object that we haven't currently declared get component in fact it might be easier if we actually do that right now so what we do is we'll come up to the top here we can get rid of these references to our background image because we the, the ones that we have commented out because we now have that set up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public uh, get static game object and it's going to be called dialog text object and then we're going to say game object dot find and we're looking for dialog text. And we're going to terminate that with that. So let's just double check what our dialog text object is actually called. So we're going to come into here. And as we can see, dialog text is actually called dialog underscore text. So we need to change our command. We need to change our code there so that it's actually looking for dialog underscore text like that. And then we can come back down to here because we now have a reference to that object. And assuming that we actually have our variable name correct, we'll just, yeah, we have get component like so. And we are going to call on text mesh pro GUI. So we're actually going to need to reference TM Pro because our game object is actually a text mesh pro if you remember from back when we completed it so tm pro there we go so now we're referencing that get component text mesh pro UG, text mesh pro ugui there we go and then we need to terminate that with parentheses and then we're referencing the text part of it and we're going to say what. We don't have a who in this case, so that's all we need to do for this one. And we also need to now set a variable called paused here equals true, because we are in fact wanting the game to pause. So we need to create a new variable, a bool called paused here. So we just copy that, come back up to the top again. And this time we're gonna go public bool paused here. And we'll just set it to false as our default. Nice and easy. 
And uh, yeah, I think we're going to need to make this actually a static as well because we're referencing it elsewhere. So there we go. Public static bool is referenced. And so now we need to copy this like this. And we need to replace that into there. Get rid of that line because we don't need that anymore. Get rid of this line because we don't need it anymore. I also need to come back up the top and where I am copying a dialog text object, we need to copy that line. And we need to paste a new one. And this time we're going to be called name plate text object. And this time we're looking for nameplate. And we'll just double check that that is nameplate with a small... No, it's nameplate with a capital P. So we come back in here and we will go nameplate text. There you go. So now we've got that object to reference as well. So we can come back down here and we'll just copy that, paste that again. Now we're going to go with nameplate. But we can just come to the top and copy that that variable name there, just to make life a little easier. Paste that in there, and now we're going to put who in there. Cool, so now what we're doing is we're setting the values of those text objects to be what our text input command is. And what you'll find is that if your last command was a clear screen, it kind of locks the UI elements object into inactive. So what I have done is I've taken my command where I tell Elaine to say something and I've put it as the last command. This is something that is going to be resolved further on down what we're doing right now. But for now, if you want to test that this actually works, then just make your last command the text command where Elaine says something. And as you can see now, my user interface does in fact activate and deactivate because it's not being locked off because it's not repeating the same command over and over again anymore. It is in fact staying on that one. So we can see our text is now appearing in the correct place, which is great. Okay. So now that we've done that, we need to come back into our code and inside our input decoder, what we need to do is come to the very top and check that we have our bool paused here and that's set to false. Cool. So in our testing script, we're going to create a new list. And this list is going to be called private list of strings because that's what our commands are. And we now need to remove that because we don't want it to be called lines. We'll call this commands equals new list of strings like that. And I've put that in entirely the wrong place. It needs to be outside of our Need to put it there there we go okay so what i also need to do is underneath that keep our things in order we're also going to say private int command line equals zero so we're setting it to read the command in in line zero first we also need a new string called last command because we actually want to check whether the command that we're carrying out was, is identical to the one that we last carried out and if it is then we're not going to repeatedly call it over and over again because otherwise that's just going to create problems so now there we go we've got our three commands remember that this is in our testing script but what i intend to do further down the line once we've got all of the relevant code in place is we're just going to rename this to I don't know, game loop or something along those lines so that this code will eventually become our proper proper code. So now what I need to do is go to uh, the start and where we're currently setting input line to be all of these different things, what I actually want to do is change that to commands.add. So we're going to get rid of that. and end the line with our parentheses as well. And instead of having input decoder pass each and every line, all we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna copy this line, if I can get my cursor to be in the right position. So we're gonna copy this, Control C, and then we're just gonna create a whole bunch of new ones. 
let's just go with that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code. We've created our new character. We don't need to repeatedly do that over and over again. So I'm going to change this to that command. And I'm going to pop that in a couple of times just to make absolutely sure that that's working. And then I'm going to throw in a screen command in there as well. And then all we're going to do is paste this line in this one and this one and this one. And what I'm going to do is change the text. This is some text. This is some more text. This is even more text in that one. And then I will copy this one. And in fact, I'll cut it and I'll paste that into this gap. Then I will cut that one and I'll paste it into this gap. And then I'll cut this one and I'll paste it into this gap. So now what we're saying we're showing an image, showing some text, showing an image, showing some text, showing an image, showing some text. And then when we click the mouse the final time, it will clear the UI and get rid of all of the extra images and just show us the final image, which means I can now get rid of all of that stuff there. There we go. So now we have defined our list of commands. Further down the line, what we will be doing is we will be filling the commands list with commands from a text file rather than putting them in manually like this. But for now, this is how we're going to test our code. Now what we want to do is come into our game loop, our update, and we're going to check if commands dot uh, command line command line is the number is not equal to last command so if the command that we want to execute is not the same as we've just ex executed then we will say last command excuse me equals commands dot the command line because we want to set that value first and the editor even know, knew what I wanted to do so that was nice and easy then we're going to say input decoder dot paused here is equal to false. So unless we set paused here to be true inside the input decoder file itself, it's going to be set to false. And that means that where we've shown some text on the screen and we've set the pause value to true, unless we're showing text on the screen currently, it will not stop. So what's going to happen is we'll create a character, but paused here is set to false. So it immediately goes on to the next line. It shows an image. Paused here is still false, so it goes on to the next line. Commands.add e, this is some text, however, this uses the say command, which does set paused here to true, so the game will then pause, or rather the commands will no longer progress until we do something else, okay? Nice and simple. And then we'll say input to decoder dot pass input line commands command line okay so that's that what we next need to do is go with if not input decoder dot paused here and command line is less than commands dot count minus one because commands dot count is actually um, one greater than because it doesn't start at zero it starts at one so if I ask for the count or the number of commands in the commands if there is only one command it will tell me there is one command it won't say zero so we need to subtract one from that otherwise we're going to get an error okay so what we're saying is if it's not paused here and we are below the number of commands if we're not at the end of the command structure then it's just going to say command line plus plus it's going to add one to the command line so it's going to move on to the next command if however input decoder dot paused here is true and input dot get mouse button down 
zero. If we left click the mouse and command line is less than commands dot count minus one, then we append command line again. So those are the only two conditions where we will move on to the next command. If game is not, if input decoder pause here is set to false and we are not at the end of our string of commands, then we will append automatically. If, however, we are at paused here and we are not at the end of our list of commands, and then we have to click the mouse. So those are the only two conditions where we will progress to the next command. So if we save our code now, what we should be able to do is come back into our code like this. And assuming that we haven't made any typos, you can see this is some text. If I click the mouse again, this is some more text. And we have another instance of our image layer. Click again. This is even more text. Another inst instance of our image layer. If I click again, we can see our interface is hidden. Our image layers go, which means the screen command has been activated, shall we say. And now, because we're no longer constantly running through that last command over and over again, we can now open and shut our interface, even though the last command activated was our screen command. So, hope you found that useful, guys. I know it was a little bit convoluted, but we got there in the end. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below again, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.